This is Twit. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. ACI Learning provides world-class service from beginning to end of your training journey and beyond. Fortify your expertise with access to self-paced IT training videos, interactive practice labs, and certification practice tests. Individuals use the code TWIT30 for 30% off a standard or premium individual IT pro membership at go.acilearning.com slash twit. The headline is the Spectrum X Ethernet switch offers lossless, quote, transmission uh, via congest via a new kind of congestion control, says NVIDIA. And when I saw that, the first question it came, well, two questions. Uh, does this even matter? And number two, why does it matter if it if it really does matter? By the way, I love it that okay. NVIDIA nails, names their chips. After great female computer scientists of the ages, this is the that Grace is Hopper. Right. Grace they call Hopper. It. Yep. So this is the ZDNet article? Yes. Yeah. The Spectrum X? Jensen yes. Huang showed oh, off man. the first iteration of the Spectrum X, the Spectrum 4, with 100 billion, wow, 100 billion transistors in a 90 millimeter square die. Uh, and this is... This is it's like uh, ridiculous. Oh, bandwidth. okay. This is fabric, I think. This, I think is, this is the fabric issue, yeah. yeah. I was like... This is a routing. This is basically you got to move that data real fast if you're talking about parallel processing that much stuff. And this is very awesome. Smart. Yeah, okay. they, <laughs> they, they have pivoted. And so they were the gaming company. And then they saw the opportunity in, in self-driving vehicles. They do a lot of chips yeah. for cars. The uh, part runs at 500 watts, y'all. That's that a little high. That is so much power. It's for an, a networking operation. So. This isn't, yeah, this is inside a supercomputer, yeah. basically. This is okay. a switch using Ethernet, which is more capacity. This is where photonics would actually help. Because if you had a photonic thing, you wouldn't have to move. The, it wouldn't, it would I don't think so. it would run as hot. Yeah. And it would be faster and you wouldn't have to have a, such smarts in there. But that's cool. Yeah, I think this is, okay. you know, um, so Jensen gave his first in-person keynote in a long time a couple of days ago. In mm -hmm. fact, I wish we'd covered it. Uh, we just kind of jammed up with the uh, keynotes. Yeah. But they're really firing on all <laughs> cylinders. It's amazing. I was almost at Computex. Really? Oh. Yeah, I decided not to go last minute, though. Well, I get it. You loser. know, I get, I get an invitation every year from one company or another. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I think... Uh, um, so did, um, I get them. Mike, uh, Micah got <laughs> one too. And you I got get one. Computex. Uh, I'm well, always so like leery about going cause I don't, it's like, well, I, I don't know. I don't want to take this free trip. Yeah. It's like a junket. So yeah. I don't know Computex was a sponsor on my show. I should mention that last month mm -hmm. they were a sponsor. Well, that's a little different Then they're a sponsor. That's different. I think. No. Yeah, but I still would have had to pay for my own trip. I don't. Oh, there are a lot of companies that want to give us free trips. I always turn it down. Miss Stacy. Yeah, I never take a free trip. Yeah. He he just said that you know Nvidia was quote a gaming company, but now they're sort of pivoting into the AI side of things, and it made me think about AMD. Uh, AMD has had its issues with its Ryzen performance uh, here and there, but is there a way for them to get into the AI side of things at some point. Yeah. And they do have, I mean, they do have chips that are used in AI. Um, so a, Jensen or NVIDIA is not the only company. Like people do use AMD chips for training and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, it's, they're just, they don't have as great of a marketing department. They don't have a CEO as charismatic and a, and a black leather jacket. But I would know <laughs> She's a cool CEO with, though. I think she's Lisa Sue? Oh yeah. yeah, she's she's not, but she's not. I've met both of them. You know when you meet Jensen and right. he has got, he comes on real strong. And right. Lisa Sue, you know that this is a really smart, sharp person who yeah. is going to like, you don't want to mess with. You don't want to disappoint Lisa Sue. But it's, they're not the same mm -hmm. from a marketing or storytelling perspective. But real fast, with this switch, I should note, what NVIDIA is doing is they're actually creating underlying hardware that is the full cloud product, right? So when he's okay. talking about two data centers and like creating an AI data center, NVIDIA is creating that AI data center. So if I'm Amazon, I'd be looking out at this and going, no kidding. what about oh, my AWS? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. So I just thought I'd share that with y'all because y'all would think that's nice. Yeah, they unveiled a supercomputer <laughs> platform, basically. In fact, yeah. at the end of the keynote, Jensen Huang says, it's too much. I know it's too much. <laughs> <laughs> I 
That's crazy. Uh, sales forecast for the current quarter, $4 billion above analyst estimates. That put NVIDIA uh, into the trillion-dollar company uh, club, which is a very small club. Uh, good for you know, good for them. I've been saying for some time that Nvidia is very impressive because they are firing on all cylinders. It's gaming, crypto for a long time. I mean, but but they were lucky because as crypto fell off the map, AI came on mm -hmm. and replaced yeah, that market yeah. for them. Uh, I, and they also, way back in two thousand and eight, when I I went out and visited them, and they had I, I called it a sexy processor. It was a mobile processor. They basically have been trying to push oh, parallel Tegra gaming was style processors. Yeah, oh, it was Tegra wasn't it? The on the Tegra. mobile devices. Yeah, yeah. I have a Tegra in my been, Nvidia Shield. Yeah, that thing is yeah. six seven years old, and it's it's as fast I as a modern. I forgot about Tegra. Yeah, but they've been pushing this style of computing since like 2006 they're like yeah. what do we got we got the world's best hammer we're gonna put this hammer where everything needs a hammer yeah. right. but they were right and graphics you don't bet against graphics and on the phone and then they want they were like we're gonna put it into like laptops because that was the available computing infrastructure they had they were like corporate presentations are going to need better graphics processors look at slideshows look at this look at youtube and then yeah, just they were creators like, oh, in gonna... general at, at one point in time just because yeah. crypto died off you still needed something that's going to process red 8k footage you know yeah they're smart so, because they have had these inroads into all these different markets then it doesn't matter if crypto goes away you know they're not leaving the gaming market either the other thing huang announced hmm. is a special ai for non-player characters oh boy <laughs> they call oh ace boy. they're going to give it to a gaming companies in fact the first one is a santa clara california no. company call uh that will use it to uh, create non-player characters in their games that hear what you say uh -oh, uh -uh. and respond via do that. AI. Cue, cue, cue the moral panic. That's coming up next. Uh, 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 NVIDIA Ace will listen to what the gamer says to a com character, convert it into text, then dump that into a generative AI program to create a more natural off-the-cuff response. So they, they're not giving up on gaming any either That's anytime awesome. soon. And of course, they have the best uh, graphics cards right now on the market, right? The 49s, yeah. 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 They're with ray tracing. And, and this is else. why Intel invented, tried to like do graphics with Larrabee and failed. And then they, they made that... Uh, did they, did they, they have a low-end video card now, uh, Intel does. It's not bad. Yeah, it, finally. It's low cost. No, it's, it's better than... It was at the Ace? I can't remember what they call it. No, I Intel. I remember. GPU, I can't remember but the new that's, one. that's, if you were in the chip world, Arc. you that's saw it. the need Arc. for this. Arc, yeah. Way back in the day, and they, they were trying. They tried so hard. Oh, remember they tried mobile, <laughs> and they were such a failure, they ended up selling off the division. I don't and have And now they're going to factories. Intel. Yeah, uh, you know. Well, they started out, and they kept their fabs the whole time, and they were really innovative until they got Brian, what's his name? Krasinich? Krasinich, yeah. Now they get packed. He Gelsinger. was terrible for Intel. Although. But Gelsinger's. Oh. There's like, uh, we were talking about this on uh, Windows Weekly. There's a little trouble at the top, apparently, <laughs> at Intel. Um, serious leadership in issues. Once, here's the story from the Wall Street Journal. Again, you know, every time I read about tech in the Wall Street Journal, I always have to think, well, Whose ox is being gored here? Once mighty Intel struggles to escape mud hole. <laughs> like, a, like, a, like a hippopotamus or a dinosaur stuck in the La Brea tar pits. Rivals such as NVIDIA have left the chip company far behind. CEO Pat Gelsinger aims to reverse firm's fortunes by, as you said, Stacy, vastly expanding its factories. Um... Gelsinger said, we had serious issues in terms of leadership, people, methodology, et cetera. Yeah, that's pretty. So he's, that's, <laughs> that's him everything. throwing, no, that's him throwing, throwing shade um, Brian, Brian under the bus. Yeah. Yeah, because he was, he was terrible. Like, yeah. he was, he had no sense of innovation. He was just, and then he was like, we need to get to, like, I don't remember if it was three nanometers or what they were going for. And then they were like, well, we're having trouble. He's like, no, we're not. And then just carried on. So that is a problem when you're dealing with like actual physics. And then here's the problem. Uh, speaking of physics with uh, crashing, uh, this is the stock performance of NVIDIA, 
Oh, yeah. AMD. Oh. <laughs> Intel. <laughs> so what happens to Intel? Does it does it die? Is there no. a scenario where it... No, what, no, no. They're tr well, eventually it could. I mean, Gelsinger says we're trying to turn into a service business. That's what the foundry business is. We have no history of this, no no ink expertise at this. So it's a Look it's at a big IBM. Gamble. That's all I have to say. That's what they Look did, right? Look at IBM. Yep. Yep. They're a services yep. business. Well, no, IBM's... IBM has... N I'm so sorry, y'all. I love IBM's research division, but IBM has nothing going for it right no. now. But it's still limping along, and it will for quite some time. Dvorak always said that the only thing keeping IBM uh, alive is it has a lot of patents. But I suspect those patents are expiring. They can't be that much use these days. Uh, so maybe that, that might be what ends up putting them under. Uh, anyway, yeah, Intel's getting eaten by TSMC and a lot of other uh, companies, NVIDIA. Uh, interesting article. I like the I like the tar pit analogy. <laughs> <laughs>